Lord has greatly used the school of the Bible. Hundreds of churches in America and across uh, the country in several uh, foreign countries have been blessed and thousands have studied uh, straight through God's word and other core courses. And Tim Tomlinson, who directs that and leads that through Crown College, is coming at this time to explain about that ministry and share about some places that have invited us to go and are asking for laborers to come and help train people. Well, good evening. It's been a privilege to assist in the School of the Bible for a number of years now. I believe over 20 years ago now, God put it in Pastor's heart to establish the School of the Bible here as a ministry of our church, and God's blessed in a big way. You may not know this, but right at this moment, this semester, there are about 700 different students just in America who are out there studying in the School of the Bible. And that's been growing uh, year after year, especially in recent years, we've seen God multiplying that. And the School of the Bible is something that I believe God put in Pastor's heart, if I understood his testimony correctly, uh, back when he was in the New York City area. And in that greater New York City area, he saw an opportunity uh, through some example there where a School of the Bible could be established where people could come from all over a city area and be trained to be more effective as a Christian in their local churches in serving the Lord Jesus Christ, a better witness for Christ, a better teacher of the word of God, uh, more grounded in their doctrine and their beliefs so that they can be a solid a testimony for Christ. And so we, under pastor's direction, we've established a, a program that we call the School of the Bible. And I, I imagine that initially um, we thought we can reach greater Knoxville and that became a reality because we've seen in these number of years that I've been associated with the School of the Bible, we've seen people come from literally all over the greater Knoxville area. In fact, I cannot remember a semester where we haven't had some people who drive in from as far away as like Middlesbrough, Kentucky, or Gatlinburg, or somewhere like that, driving sometimes an hour one way, just to come somewhere where they can hear the Word of God taught systematically, um, they can complete a program and earn a certificate, a biblical study certificate that shows what they've learned and what they've achieved, and just to become more grounded. Uh, we've had grandparents, we've had moms and dads, we've had uh, professional people. I can remember dentists and lawyers and business people who've come who did not have a, any formal Bible training, but they just wanted to be a more serious uh, Christian and a more effective worker in their local church. And we've seen that for so many years. And God has continued to bless. Uh, God expanded, uh, I believe, that understanding. You know, God has a way of doing that to see that we could not only do this here, but this could be duplicated all over America. And then he expanded our understanding to see that it could be done around the world. And so now we have the School of the Bible program, these 12 classes, this sort of foundational training in the Word of God going on now in other places around the world. For instance, in Kathmandu, Nepal, when uh, Crown Nepal was established a couple of years ago, this was the first entry-level training program that was used. In fact, it's still used for those entry students who come. Uh, it's been translated into the Thai language and is being conducted in Thailand. It's been translated um, into other languages in several other countries, and we'll have an opportunity to talk more about that in our mission village. But we want to see God just take this school of the Bible as far as he wants to take it. And uh, I want you to pray with us as a church family. Everybody can pray that God will touch this. And so many of you have been involved in the school of the Bible by being a student and participating in it. And uh, what I know is you know the program and you know what's going on. And you could be the person to really have a heart to do what you can to get this school of the Bible duplicated into many, many other places. Right now, starting with one school of the Bible, we now have 73 registered schools of the Bible spreading out across America and around the world. And uh, we just praise God for that. And that can grow exponentially as we see God's people have a heart to, to do that. The theme of the school of the Bible is really God's method. It's 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And that is the work that's going on through the School of the Bible program. Would you please pray for it and pray for God to continue to touch and multiply it? 
We need uh, laborers to see this go to other countries. We need laborers to see this get into every state in the United States. Uh, we need funds to see it translated into other languages. And I want to introduce to you one of the faithful men who came to the School of the Bible. And then now he is going out to teach others also. And he's going to tell you a little bit about that. I know Brother Cart's going to help him. But his name is Elmer Castillo, and he's been in our church family for a number of years now. And uh, we're happy to have him graduate just not too long ago from the School of the Bible. And he's going to share a little bit of his burden. May I ask, how many of you have studied in the School of the Bible? Would you please raise your hand? That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. That's a lot of people. This is Elmer Castillo, as Brother Tim said. And uh, he asked me to help him a little. And he has been in our church, he told me, for eight years. And he wasn't someone who just showed up here and sat around. And I wanted him to share his testimony. We want to hear from him. And uh, tell us about your family, Brother Elmer. Um, um, my family, I uh, met my wife here in Knoxville. Um, 2000, it was uh, 2008. And... Um, I have the privilege to have my wife with uh, my two children, Annabella and Abigail Castillo, here serving in the North Free and uh, other places. She, she likes the, the children's ministry. Wow. And you were sharing with me, you came to the States, you were working here with a work visa for, for about uh, uh, three years, and you decided to immigrate here to the United States. And, uh, but you were saved. Tell us about your salvation. Yes, um, I was saved on an on a evangelistic uh, conference that local church and a village I'm from uh, have every year in a soccer field, uh, public, public place. And uh, that's, where I, that's where I accepted the Lord Jesus as my personal Savior. I left my hand for Jesus that, that night. And where was that? As a... Uh, in a uh, city uh, from Huehuetenango. Okay, and that's in the country of Guatemala. And uh, so you were saved there, and you were coming to the States working, and you decided to come back and immigrate here. And the Lord brought you. You met your wife. You have your daughters here now. Tell us how you came to be introduced to our church. How did you show up here to church? Well, uh, this is uh, a truly story that uh, I met Brother uh, Gary uh, Grandson, grandson. Uh, he was uh, working in the bass ministry, this church, and uh, he, he showed up for knock the doors and get the children. So I was one of the one, he found me there, I met him, and then got in the bus. When I got in the bus, it was, I only see children there. And then I was the big, I guess I was the big child <laughs> and the bus. So. And then brought me to church, brought me to the Sunday school. From the Sunday school, they brought me to the Spanish-speaking uh, ministry. And they, uh, that's, how I, they, that's how I met the church here. The God, lead, the God was leading me to find a church home. Uh, at the time, was uh, running away from the Lord. And uh, you told me you follow the Lord in baptism here at our church. You're a member of our church. And then uh, you do, got great English. You're doing great. But how did you learn that English? Tell us what ministry here helped you with the English as an immigrant. Well, the, the ministry that helped me here was the uh, International uh, Language Navigators with uh, Mrs. Uh, Polly Deringer. And um, I come because I was hearing in the services that they're offering free English classes. So I just decided to jump in. Uh, Go to work every morning and get off four o'clock, so I have time to come home, uh, take a shower, and got to to the first class on Monday night, seven o'clock. Be ready to uh, hear the English speaking class. So that's how I um, I come to learn uh, the English I speak now. <laughs> Amen. And then uh, because you're English, you were able to get into the school of the Bible. And you studied there through the program. How did those two ministries help you here? I mean, uh, you felt uh, you were running from God. You, you got in contact with our church, got back uh, with God and serving God. God brought you, and you have a family. 
And then how do these ministries help you? Learning English here and then the School of the Bible, how do they help you personally? Learning English was the one thing uh, needed uh, for my part of my life in this, uh, in this country because I can know uh, go to the restaurant and speak Spanish to ask for food. They don't gonna understand me. So <laughs> I just, they, they, uh, their class, their English classes helped me a lot and then helped me, helped me uh, a lot at the more than I, I was thinking to because from there I can uh, go to the office and ask for some uh, different offices and ask for a job. I know how to ask for a job and then so they helped me with that. Okay. And then you help your brother uh, know the Lord and he's in, in Guatemala and he's been contacting you saying can you can you come and help him and you have a burden now to go to Guatemala with your brother and help him start a school of the Bible. Tell us about that. What's yes, the need there? Yes. Uh, the need in Guatemala is um, as much the way you think. Uh, the Catholicism is uh, getting, getting around uh, the whole country. Uh, too many cities that there's the most churches is Catholicism. So, uh, and then Baptist churches, they just started going there uh, and then that's like 68 or 70 percent is a uh, Catholicism religion and uh, 42 percent uh, the rest of the population is um, uh, Christians uh, being born Christians. Amen. That's a great need there and uh, I know you have a burden as well or faith for the family and uh, well, praise the Lord. We're so thankful for you, Elmer, and your family, and you're serving the Lord in many ways here in our church. And we're praying for laborers uh, for Guatemala that will help him do that. <laughs> well, I want to stand here with you myself for just a moment. Can you imagine this now? The bus ministry, we think reaching children. This is a big child that got, got here on the bus route. Isn't that amazing? And thank the Lord for it. But there were other things to help him. We started the International Language Navigators because we knew that we could teach people to speak English as a second language. When my son Matt was here helping me years ago, he gave me that idea and I said, I don't understand how that works. He says, the place we can send someone to train, to train others to be teachers of English as a second language. And it got started. And this is what we were praying about. Many people all around the world have been certified to teach English as a second language from here, from that International Language Navigators. We had to come up with a name, so we're navigating with a language, International Language Navigators. So you went through that program. Yes. And learned to speak. And then he hears we've got a school of the Bible, and he's graduated, taken all 12 courses over a two-year period, and graduated from the Knoxville School of the Bible. Isn't that amazing? And we give God the glory for that. And he said to me not long ago, he'd like to serve in the church, usher, sing, all this kind of thing. I said, have at it, man. We want you to be a part of all of it. So that's what this fellow's doing. Thank God for you, Elmer. Yes. Love you and appreciate you. And you're an inspiration to all of us. You really are. And we're Amen. praying for you and for your family. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.